welcome to our lesson for today. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna start this lesson by talking about what we did last, last time. time. Yeah. So last time, remember, we were talking about how David wanted to build a house for God yeah. where he can put the Ark of the Covenant. Yes. Because David was like, I am living in this beautiful cedarwood palace mm -hmm. in luxury, yes. but the Ark of the Covenant it's is in still tent. in a tent. So David said, I want to build a, a house, house for God. God. When then he told Nathan, and Nathan said, this is a good idea. Mm -hmm. But that night, Nathan got a message from God. Mm -hmm. And God said that he doesn't want David to build him a house. He wants to be able to move yes. with his people with yeah. the Ark of the Covenant. Yes. So he said, I don't want David to build me a house. Mm -hmm. And this made David very sad and mm -hmm. disappointed. Yeah. But God said, I will allow a son of David to, to build, build me a house. house. Yes. And this made David feel better. Yeah. And then also, on top of this, yes. God promised that David's kingdom would we'll never, we'll ever end. end. Reign forever. Yes. Yeah. So David would be king, and then his sons would be king, and the sons of his sons would be king, and, and, on, and on, on, on and on and on and on, yes. and David's kingdom would never end. Yeah. And this made David very, very, very happy. Mm -hmm. So now we're gonna see what happens next. So now David is king finally, and remember he he was just in the palace, and then he remembered his friend. And remember he had made a promise to his friend Jonathan. There's a time that Jonathan asked David to promise that he would take care when when he when he became when David became king he would take care of Jonathan's family. family. Yes. So David remembered that promise and so he called his servants and he asked, Is anyone still alive from the household of Saul? I want to show kindness to, to them, them because of Jonathan. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now remember, in those days when a new king came into power, the yeah. old king and his whole family, they would all be killed. Yeah. But because David had made a promise to Jonathan, he said he would not do that. He decided to act differently. Yes, yeah. he decided to act differently. So he asked his servants, Did anyone from the house of King Saul survive? Did yeah. anyone from David's family? from Jonathan's family survived. Yeah. And the servants didn't know. The servants didn't know, yes. Yeah. So they this got the servants looking around to see if anyone from King Saul's family survived. And yes. then they came across a servant that worked in the house of King, King Saul. Saul yes. And his name was Ziba. Yeah. So um uh, Ziba was brought before King David and King David asked him the same question Is, did, anyone did anyone survive, survive from King Saul's family and Ziba said yes actually there is one one, one that survived, survived. That's one the son, son of Jonathan. Yes, one son of Jonathan survived, and his name is Mephibosheth. And David was so happy, and he said, "Go bring and bring him here. I bring want him to right here. now." Mm -hmm. But then Ziba said, "My king, he will not even be of any use to you. He will not be of any service to you yes. because he cannot walk. He cannot walk. Now. He is crippled. His yes. feet are badly hurt. His feet are badly hurt. Mm -hmm. Now, when." When King Saul and Jonathan had died fighting the Philistines, and a lot of King Saul's family had died, the nanny of Mephibosheth, Mephibosheth was a, was a baby at that like, time. At that time, when King Saul and Jonathan died, Mephibosheth was still very young. He was a baby. He was a baby. So his nanny had taken him, and when she heard about all of this, she decided to yeah, run away. She with heard him. of how terrible the, the battle had turned out to, when King Saul was killed and Jonathan was killed. She decided to run away with the little baby who was Mephibosheth. So that she so, can keep yeah, him so that safe. she can keep him safe and no one will she did not want anyone to hurt Mephibosheth. But now when she was running, she tripped and, and she dropped the baby because she was in such a hurry. Yes. So she dropped the baby and the baby hurt his feet and that is how Mephibosheth became crippled. Yes. So now she, but he badly hurt his, his feet. Yes, he was yeah. very badly hurt. Yes. So now Mephibosheth is an adult. Yes. So remember David has sent Ziba to get Mephibosheth. Mm -hmm. So when Mef when Ziba gives Mephibosheth this message, yeah. he gets very scared and very terrified. Yes. But he has to obey the, the royal, royal command. command. Yes. So he goes to the palace to meet with King and David. He's shaking. He's very afraid. Then King oh, David yeah. goes. And looks at Mephibosheth and he tries to see if there's any resemblance to, Dave, to, to, Jonathan. to Jonathan. He's trying to see his friend Jonathan in Mephibosheth's face, but he can't because, because Mephibosheth is so scared. scared. All, all David is seeing is a face full of fear. Yes. yes. 
So David tells him, you don't need to be afraid Do of me. Do not be afraid. I don't want to hurt you. I'm not going to hurt you. I don't want to kill you. But still, Mephibosheth was very scared because he knew of that order that when a new king comes in and he kills from the everyone from the other King's family yeah. dies, yes. So David told Mephibosheth, you don't be afraid of me. Actually, you are here and you will become, you will live here now. You will dine with me. You will dine with yes. me and I will give you back all the land that belonged to your grandfather, mm -hmm. Saul. Yeah. And Ziba will now become your, your servant, servant and he will take care of the land for yes. you and he will till the land for you when mm -hmm. you live yeah. here with me. Yes. Then Mephibosheth was like, no, 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 you don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. Don't I can't that. even help you. I wouldn't even be useful in yeah. your household. Mm -hmm. You don't do that. You can't do that. But then David said, no, for the sake of Jonathan, your father. Who because, was my friend. Because he was my friend you will now live here yes and you will always be dear to me so david kept his promise to jonathan because he said for the sake of jonathan he will, he will always be dear, dear to, to me. me so remember he made that promise a long time ago but now he's keeping that promise by taking care of Mephibosheth who cannot even help him because he's already crippled. Yes. But David says, because of Jonathan, because I made that promise to Jonathan, I'm going to take care of you. So the same way children, when we make promises, always keep your promises. Just try as much as you can to always keep the promises that you can, especially when they're good promises. Always try your best to keep promises because even God keeps his promises to, to us, us. Yes. and then also we also need to show kindness David was just too kind to Mephibosheth he, sh he not only did he keep the promise but he he showed he showed Mephibosheth great kindness so as children of God we always ought to be kind to everyone around us so now we are going to stand up and sing our song so let's stand up and sing this song Okay, kids. So we've just talked about how David kept his promise to Jonathan, Jonathan that he would take care of his family, mm -hmm. and he did this by taking care of Mephibosheth. Yes. Now, God always keeps his promises to us, just like David kept his promise to Jonathan. Yeah. We need to keep our promises to everyone because God, God always, always keeps, keeps his, his promises, promises to us. Yes. So now we're gonna sing a song about how God always keeps his promises. Yeah. Everyone, stand up and help us sing this song. You keep your promises, I know I can trust in you. When you speak it, God you do it, your words are always true. God makes a promise and then he keeps it. Numbers 23, 19, God makes a promise and then he keeps it. Numbers 23, 19 Numbers 23, 19 You keep your promises I know I can trust in you When you speak it, God you do it Your words are always true God makes a promise and then he keeps it Numbers 23, 19 God makes a promise And then He keeps it Numbers 23, 19 Numbers 23, 19 You promised to make me strong You're with me all day long You have good plans for me so I will say, God makes a promise and then he keeps it. Numbers 23, 19, God makes a promise and then he keeps it. Numbers 23, 19, Numbers 23, 19, Numbers 23, 19. Kids, 
it's time for us to do our craft now we've just talked about how david showed kindness to mephibosheth mm -hmm. even though mephibosheth would not be helpful to david in his whole household anyway at all david still said i will give you back the land of your grandfathers and you will stay here in the palace yes. with me and eat at, at the right same table, table. exactly yes. so we said that mephibosheth broke his legs when he was a child mm -hmm. so now to represent mephibosheth in our craft we're going to make a crutch yeah. so he can use his crutches when he needs to walk so we're going to make a crutch and we're also going to say that david showed kindness to mephibosheth yes so for this craft we have our three rolled up pieces of paper mm -hmm. so i'm going to start by showing you how to make these rolled up pieces of paper yeah. so i want you to take a pencil mm -hmm. and a brown paper or any, color. or any color paper our papers are just brown so take a pencil and any color paper and then roll it up so i want you to put the pencil at one edge one corner of the rectangular shaped paper mm -hmm. and then i want you to roll the paper with the pencil yeah. so just roll just all, all the way okay. just keep rolling all the way until you get to the end of the paper yeah. and there we go and once we've gotten to the end of the paper I'm going to take cello tape and I'm going to put it all together. So you can use cello tape or you can use glue, but I'm going to use cello tape so that I can stick my items together. And so I will have a rolled up crutch. Yes. So you just take cello tape and you stick your, your paper together. And once you stick it, cello tape or glue or whatever else you have, once you stick it, you have a piece like this. That's so, all rolled up. That's all rolled up. So we made three of these papers. Yeah. So we made three of them because we need to make a full crutch. So now after we made three of them, I want you to take two of your crutches, the two sticks, and I want you to put them together. And at one end, I want you to fold. Just press in at one end, at the bottom end. And once you press in, you see at the top, it forms a V-shape. So I want you to take a stapler and staple that part together. Make sure it's secure, it won't move, but staple that part together. And once you've stapled it together, you'll have a V shape like this, but it's also straight and flat at the bottom. So this is the bottom of our crutch. Next thing we need to do is we need to make two lengthwise shapes over here in the middle. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask you to take your third stick and to just cut a piece of it out, a small piece. So measure and then cut out the length that you need. And once you've cut this piece out, I want you to staple it somewhere at the bottom of your crutches, right next to where the V is. So the good thing about this V is that it can be open and can close, it can become bigger or smaller. So take your stapler and just staple that part together. Make sure you ask for help if you find it difficult to staple, but once you put that part together, you'll have the first forming shape. Now it sort of looks like a, a normal usual crutch. And then after you've done that, I need you to take the paper again because we need to make another longer one. So this one is going to go all the way at the top. So I'm going to put mine close to here and again measure and then cut. And then staple. So make sure it's firm and it's secure and it won't move at all. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to staple the last part on one side and then on the other side. So now we have our crutch. So I'm just going to make it the actual size of it. So I'm going to cut the top out here a bit and then also on the other side cut out the top a bit. And there we go, we have our crutch. So you can staple at the bottom over here so it stays together, because this is the part that stays on the ground, remember? Yeah. This is the part that stays on the ground, so we need that to be stable. Then we have the top of our crutch. 
Now we're going to put this scratch and we're going to take it and we're going to make sure that it's stable on our piece of paper. So just take your crutch and stick it there. So staple your crutch so that it's on the paper, stuck on the paper so it won't move. And our craft. So I'm going to staple at the top. And I'm going to staple. Yes, I think mine is stable, it won't move. Yeah. So now that we have a stable crutch, we need to now write down what our craft is about so that we can always remember what our craft is about. So take your pen or your pencil or whatever and write down on the side that is empty. So we're going to write, David is kind to Mephibosheth because that is our story. So it's like David is kind to Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth is a long name. <laughs> Mephibosheth. Yes. And for anyone who might have forgotten, Mephibosheth was Jonathan's son. Yes. Yeah. Mephibosheth was the only surviving son of Jonathan. Mm -hmm. So after right, David is kind to Mephibosheth. Mm -hmm. We need to remember where our memory, where our, this story of ours is from. Yeah. So this story is from 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel. Chapter 9. So you write second Samuel 9. So this is where our memory, this is where our story is from. Then on top of this, we have a memory verse yeah. for us to read and for us to learn. Uh -huh. So I want you to write Proverbs 19 22. Proverbs 19 and verse 22. So Proverbs 19.22, and what does it say? It says, what is desired of a man is kindness. So we're going to write that down. What is desired in a man in a man is kindness. Is kindness. Yes. And this is exactly what David showed to Mephibosheth, mm -hmm. meaning that even us as children, as we grow up with anyone that we meet, we yeah. need to show kindness. kindness to everyone that we meet, even though they might not, we might not know them yeah. and they might not be useful to us or helpful to us in any way, yeah. we still need to show them kindness. kindness. Yes, and something else we need to know, kindness is actually a gift of the Holy Spirit. Yes. So if you feel like you're not kind, remember you can always pray to God and ask Him to fill you up with His Spirit that will cause you to have the gift gift of kindness to everyone around you so that's our lesson today and that is our craft today and that's our lesson today yeah. and we'll see you next, next time, time. bye